So how's everybody's Outlook game? If you're like me, you've been doing it for a very long time and sometimes we can get stuck in a rut and use the same tools over and over and forget about all the amazing new tools and capability that you may not know is an Outlook. So today we're gonna to be talking about some of my favorite underutilized tools in Outlook and hopefully we can challenge you to up your Outlook game. So my name is Melissa Peoples and I am an executive assistant, coach, and trainer. And I am so excited to be partnering on this collab with ASAP to bring you the series of four vlogs. We're gonna be starting off session one and two on Outlook and then go into my very favorite tool of all time, which is OneNote. As an administrative professional, it will rock your world. If you're not using it, trust me when I say you gotta come over and learn about it. I am connecting with a lot of people that are just new to the Outlook environment because their entire career they've been on G Suite, which makes me feel completely really old, but you know, hey, whatever. So whether you've been an Outlook pro for years or if you're new to the Outlook game and you're coming over from G Suite, either way, these tools are gonna absolutely change the way that you work. Technology is changing all the time and it is so important that you connect with other people that are in the field so that you can learn best practices. You continue to do administrative benchmarking so that you can understand what someone else is doing and how they're using it and you can compare it to your own workflow. So hopefully today you'll have the opportunity to do that. So let's get into the fun stuff, y'all. Okay guys, so this might be a little shocking, but truthfully the most underutilized tool that I find is the ribbon. Most people don't use it to its full capability. A lot of times you kind of get stuck just viewing your inbox a certain way and you don't use the tools that are there so that you're using everything that's available to you instead of just the ones that you've used over and over again. So if I'm looking at my inbox, the biggest thing that I like to do is change it up by view. In your view, this has all of the different types the categories, the flags, all of that good stuff. So instead of viewing your inbox just by date and processing them as soon as they come in, change it up. And if you go by type, I always suggest that you right click on it in the header and collapse all groups, or you can go right here and just collapse all your groups. And then you can see how everything is batched together. So if I am in my, let's just say in, I'm in my scent, and if I wanted to do the same thing, again, it's going to default it by date, but I want to change it up and to see who I sent it uh, to. So I'm going to change it. If I want to see everything quickly, I can collapse all groups, and now I can see everything super easy and go, oh, okay, this is who I wanted to send it to, and I'm going to look at it that way. Really easy. Okay, so the next thing is new items. So this is one way, if you're in your inbox and you're like, oh, I need to send a task or I need to send a meeting, you don't actually have to click out of it and go down here and then double click and go to my calendar and do it from there. You can create a new meeting or vice versa. If you're in your calendar and you need to shoot over an email, just click on new items and pick whichever one that you want. You can also right click down here in the toolbar and it'll do the same thing for you. All right, so one of the other tools that I think people should get into the habit of using all the time is the cleanup function. So it might sound a little scary, but I promise you it's okay. So the cleanup function will delete redundant messages. So if I send you a message to, if I send a message to five people and everyone responds, at different times and then conversations start going and you're late and you didn't see everything well now you've got like 20 messages in your inbox and every single time somebody responds there's the thread that's kept inside that email so click on clean up and you can have the ability to clean up the folder or the conversation or all your entire inbox and it'll just get rid of all the redundant messages and keep the latest, most current message that has everything in it. So it'll save you a ton of time. So what I love about this is that I don't have to get out of my inbox. I can just simply see if my calendar is available on the day they've asked me in the email. So I can just click and say, okay, on Wednesday, I am not available at one o'clock, but we could meet at two. So super simple, but it's right here. 
I know what you're going to ask me. You want to know if you can do it for an executive calendar, and their answer is unfortunately not. But shout out to Microsoft so they can give us that option. Okay, so my next tip is to actually use tasks. So we're going to go to my inbox here for a second and look at it. And we're going to go ahead and expand all these messages. So as you can see, I kind of went through and just like randomly put some tasks in here. If anybody is wondering, this is actually my training and not my actual inbox. So just FYI, what most people do with tasks is they just click on it just like this, right? So the problem is if you've ever tried to use tasks before and you've done this, when you try to go back and actually utilize the task function, it feels impossible because you've got hundreds of emails all flagged. So what I suggest is taking it one step further. If you are used to clicking on it, just right click instead and you can actually assign your task by day. So I can click on it and just decide on when this is important for me to do. If you notice, if I click, so I'm going to click on action needed and I am going to give it a custom date and say, um, schedule meeting with Sam as an example. And I actually am going to do it um, somewhere between the 21st and the 22nd. And then I'm going to hit okay. So now that I've triaged my inbox, I can see my actions here, but my favorite way is if you actually go over to your calendar. So this is the great way on how you can utilize tasks and make a really big difference on how quickly you are managing them. So if I'm looking on my calendar and I have the task list as normal, I can easily see my tasks on the day that they're due. If I want to change it, I can go arrange by start date instead. And if I want to say, no, I really just want to see when they're due. You can even choose to see your completed tasks, but I think most of us as EAs, we just like to see it done and move it out of the way. <laughs> so what's great about this is you can help manage your priorities and your workflow when you are deciding on how you are going to manage that email versus just getting an email and responding to it. So if this email is completed, I can just right click on it and mark it complete. And there it goes. It also marks it off from over here. Now, let's say somebody drops by your desk and says, oh, hey, by the way, I need you to do this. Most of us are like, okay, I'm in the middle of something else. So an easy way to add a new task, click inside of your daily task list and then type it up and say, send email to Melissa. Done. So it adds it here and it adds it over here as well. Now, if you're using O365, you're probably asking, what's the difference between that and to do? Well, let me show you. Let's go over there really quick. And I am going to refresh this. And let's look at to do. So if you noticed, send email to Melissa Mosier. It's what I just typed up. So it is actually the same thing. I know a lot of people um, really like the idea of the to-do, but this is one that I think is a really big difference. So raise your hand if you're someone who uses the at mention function. I do it and I love it. And I love it when people do it back to me. And here is why. We've all been there when you get an email that's six paragraphs long and somewhere in the fifth paragraph, the third sentence in is an ask for you and you completely miss it because because seriously, who's got time to read all that? Nobody. Putting an at mention really can make a big difference and I'm gonna show you why. Okay, so let's just put, for example, um, okay, so I have my name now in the CC and then I'm gonna give an example for, I don't know, let's just say feedback requested. Okay, so if in the email I'm gonna say, can you do this, right? Most people will leave it at that and hit send. And then you're like, I don't know, is it me? Is it Melissa? Like who needs to do this action? But if I change it and I hit the at symbol and then I'm going to pick this email and say, can you follow up next week? Now I will say if you are an EA and you are in the habit of adding yourself to the CC so that you can remember to follow up this will change your life. This can make a big difference 
because if you're assigning something to yourself as a reminder, if that's how you manage things, then this is an easy way for you to filter, going back to what we mentioned earlier, is changing up the view, and then you can kind of sort them and see when there's an app mention, so you remember to follow it up. Okay guys, so I hope that you have enjoyed some of these tips. I'd love to hear if these are things that you have actively used or if these are new to you. And what are your favorite underutilized tools in Outlook? So I'm so excited to continue this vlog with you guys. So we'll see you next month on vlog number two. Bye y'all.